Okay, this goes against every instinct I have, but here we go. This is Minute Food. My dad picked our first microwave out of someone's trash, and my mom made him put it in the basement in case, I don't really know, but she didn't trust the thing. So I might not have had the most rational upbringing as far as microwaves. But one thing I heard everywhere, so I knew was definitely true, is that you should never, ever put metal in there. At some point though, you've probably put something metal in a microwave by accident, and on purpose. And chances are, nothing catastrophic has happened. Not to mention that the inside of a microwave is made of metal. For me though, the final straw was when I stumbled across these microwave-safe metal containers. I could no longer deal with all this conflicting information, so it was time to griddle this riddle. First, let's talk about how microwaves actually work, which we have a whole video about. But here's the TLDW version. This thing, a magnetron, sends out relatively low-frequency electromagnetic waves known as, yes, microwaves. The waves bounce back and forth inside the cavity, blending into an electromagnetic field that flips back and forth super fast. When the field meets up with certain types of molecules in food, like water, salt, and fats, it pulls the molecules into alignment. And as the field flips, it pulls the molecules the other way. The result of lots of these molecules jiggling back and forth billions of times a second is heat. That's how food gets hot in a microwave. Metals don't contain the same types of molecules, those that interact readily with microwaves, but they do contain lots of loose electrons floating around on their surface. When these electrons meet up with an oscillating electromagnetic field, they start sloshing back and forth. This has a few different consequences. The first is that the sloshing electrons basically form a shield that re-emits most of the incoming electromagnetic energy. This is why microwaves are lined with metal. It reflects the electromagnetic waves, bouncing them around to create the oscillating field that cooks your food. You might have heard that additional metal in a microwave, especially without any food in there to absorb the energy, will bounce the energy around so much that it could actually damage the magnetron. And while that is possible, microwaves today have better protection against this kind of reflection than they used to. The bigger issue with microwaving metal is a different side effect of those sloshing electrons. Since they're negatively charged, as the electrons move around, they repel each other, which results in them spacing out over the surface of the metal. But, and this is kind of unintuitive, this spacing out actually pushes them into any edges or points in the metal surface, causing electrons to bunch up in these places. The more electrons bunch up, the bigger the negative charge at that spot gets, until eventually it starts pushing electrons into the air, where they bang into air molecules and strip off electrons, which bang into other air molecules, stripping off more electrons. The air becomes a soup of charged particles, a soup through which that built-up negative charge can travel. This is the same process that creates lightning, although in your microwave, the electrical discharge is known as arcing. On their own, a few of these sparks aren't a huge deal. But once arcing starts, a running microwave's electromagnetic field can intensify it. So if it's left unchecked, arcing could, potentially, burn a hole through your microwave. Which sounds scary. But over at Electroboom, one of our favorite YouTube channels, Mehdi had a remarkably hard time getting metal in his microwave to arc at all, to his definite frustration. And as I've been working on this video, I have also been surprised at how little arcing I've seen, even with stuff I've explicitly heard not to put in a microwave. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but as a resident lawyer here, I'd like to remind everyone that we're not responsible for what happens in anyone's microwave. So please don't go throwing all sorts of weird things in there. Thank you. Okay, so maybe just trust me and Medi that microwaving metal doesn't always cause arcing. And actually, sometimes you're supposed to put metal in there, like this or this. Because of how a microwave cooks, food in there generally can't get hotter than the boiling point of water. But if metal is thin enough, and this is pretty complicated science, instead of reflecting the electromagnetic energy, the loose electrons actually absorb it, causing the metal to get really hot. So some manufacturers of microwavable food add a super thin metal film into the packaging to ensure that, say, the crust of your pizza gets hot enough to crisp up, or the oil gets hot enough to actually pop popcorn. The most ubiquitous example of this strategy, the crisping sleeve of a Hot Pocket, is now, sadly, a thing of the past. Anyway, the point is that none of these metal-containing products are bad news in your microwave. So when is metal a problem, and when isn't it? 
the biggest factor is the metal's shape. Smooth, rounded metal, where electrons have plenty of space to slosh around without bunching up, is very unlikely to arc. So that crisping disk underneath your microwavable pizza should be fine, especially since the food snuggled up against it basically buffers against any potential arcing. A smooth piece of aluminum foil? Generally okay. It's even endorsed by the USDA, albeit carefully. These microwavable stainless steel containers? Absolutely fine, despite my hesitations. But interestingly, the instructions are very clear to look out for deep dents or scratches. That's because any irregular spots where those loose electrons can bunch up could cause arcing. This is also why twist ties, metal rim dishes, and the thin metal handle of those classic takeout containers are all off limits. Too many rough edges and pointy spots. There's also the issue of metal near metal. Metal is a much better conductor of electricity than air, even that supefied air so it provides an easier path for that negative charge to flow. So putting two bits of metal in a microwave in close proximity to each other, especially if one has a pointy spot, increases the likelihood of arcing. That's why people advise against putting forks and crumpled aluminum foil in the microwave. It's also why you should be careful that any metal you can safely put in there is far enough away from the metal walls to discourage any built-up charge from flowing between them. Finally, there's the matter of surrounding something you are trying to heat up with metal, a material which reflects electromagnetic energy. This isn't a problem as far as safety, but it can be a problem as far as actually heating up your food. The deeper the metal container, or the more enclosed it is, the more you're limiting the heating up potential of your microwave. But the configurations of most microwavable metal containers out there, like these, which are relatively shallow, seem to allow enough energy in to pretty effectively heat stuff up, at least in my experience so far. These containers are also a lot lighter and more durable than the glass ones I've been using since we started trying to reduce our household use of plastic. So even though it still feels a little wrong every time I put one of these metal boxes in the microwave, you could say I'm warming up to the idea. You know what's just like a microwave? A VPN. Seriously, they're both complicated things I never thought that much about. But once I understood what they were actually doing, the world kind of opened up. If you're like I was, clueless about VPNs, here's what you should know. A virtual private network, like Private Internet Access, the awesome sponsor of this video, is an app that hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. This achieves a few different things. First, it protects whatever you do online from, well, everyone. It also means that if you are in a place where certain online content isn't available, like how Roadrunner, the Anthony Bourdain documentary, isn't available on Netflix in the US, a VPN will let you change your IP address to a location where you can access it. If all this sounds appealing, check out Private Internet Access, which has over 30 million downloads. It's available for all platforms, and with a single subscription, you can protect as many devices as you want. If you go to piavpn.com slash minute food, you'll get 83% off your subscription. That'll make it only about two bucks per month with four months free. Plus, you'll be supporting Minute Food. So just go check it out, okay?